here, viewers. Welcome back to the Self Made Auto Channel. We've got the 2018 Ford Escape. It's got the big 2.0. Needs a battery. Super easy. At least it should be. However, the battery lives back here. <laughs> That's convenient. Um, I was being sarcastic. So we have to remove this air filter out of our way. And I have previous experience with these Fords and there's a little retainer back there for the air filter and that always has a tendency to break. Be warned. Uh, so we do have to be a little bit on the careful side. Let's, let's remove this little rubber flap here. Get that unhooked off this tube. It's got the turbo. Uh, we need to remove the clamp off from this little guy. So let's get a flathead screwdriver. Dangerously close to that pat positive battery terminal. We could unhook it, but then why? But then why? How could we live up to our middle name of danger? Okay, we made it. We survived. We'll unhook that. And then the problem is where this little retainer is down here, we're gonna hope it doesn't break. Let's, let's try to give it the classic reach under here. Oh, there we go. It did not break. I don't recall if you can take this out as an assembly. I don't remember, but we're gonna try it before we take the lid off it. I'm thinking it's not gonna be friendly with the hose. Oops. Got a wire getting a little tight over here. We have the wire for our intake air temp sensor. It's got a little Christmas tree fastener on it here. We'll see if we can't weasel that out of there. We'll get us a weaseling tool. Stick under that little fella. And there. Now it won't be as tight. I still am not certain that it will slide up out. She's pretty close. Might have to push up on the cowl here slightly. Oh, it's very, very close. I don't know if we move the brake reservoir, if that will give us enough room. Let's see if we can give birth to this thing here. I'll show you once I get this out here. What's snagging up under there? So this is that tab that I told you is usually not very friendly. And this goes down beside the battery. When I was pulling it out, it was hooking onto the wire, which we have to remove anyways. But so you can take it out one piece. Probably going back in. We'll just take the lid off it, uh, just because. We found a leaf. All right. Now what do we have to do? I don't remember how all this stuff snaps together. I think the lid holds all that. Oh, oh, and down. So now we're gonna get people's goats. Okay, we're gonna hook the positive battery terminal here. We're gonna unhook that. If you wanna be safe about it, you can pull the stud off the strut tower there that goes to uh, the negative battery if you don't feel that you can control yourself enough to not you know, short, short it out. Let's see here. Let's do, let's do this. We'll try to be civilized here. Let's pop the uh, little Christmas tree fasteners off the uh, wire here, get that out of the way, and then we'll just slide this little guy out. Look at this one. It's a super convenient setup, you know. Not to mention, I believe the battery has to be registered. That old story.
Okay, there's one Christmas tree. There's two. There's three. There's one more down here. Four. Okay. There's that. That's got that wire set to the side. Now there is one small wire down here. Looks like we need your classic 10 mil. I believe it probably is. It is. We'll probably just use our wrench. Yep. We'll take that nut off. There's that one. So that's that little wire that hangs down there, okay? Now, I should be able to slip her up. I'm trying to remember, I thought this. Okay. What the world? Little guy just slid up if I remember right. Oftentimes when these come in, these are all everything's already broke. It makes them way easier to do. But we don't want to break anything. Yeah, okay. So we'll pull that back a little bit. There we go. There it is. Alright, yeehaw. So now get those wires out of our way. Now it's super easy. Okay? So to get this up, to slide it up, it has little latches up here on the top corner, on the left side, and then on the other left side, it's got them both. And they, they click down in, so to pull it up, you kinda gotta wedge these out slightly to get it past those uh, little retainers. But that all makes sense to you. It'll all make sense to you eventually. Now, we need to get a 10 mil and we need to get the top off that uh, battery hold down. Let's see if we can't reach in. Yeah. I, didn't, I just kind of jamming her off to the side there because I didn't want my ratchet to get stuck. So that's why I didn't just drop it right on top of it. Finish that off with a handy. Come on, baby. There it is. So there's that one. So just one of those nuts. And then here's the other one. There is that one. There it is. So there's that little fella. I don't think it's directional. Yep, it must be because it has a notch on this side and nothing on that side. So it must be, must be directional to a certain degree. Now, we need to gain access to the negative battery. In order to do so, we've got to reach up under here because it has a current sensor on the battery and they've got the wires running through this little notch and we need to get them out of that little holder we don't just yank them off. There we go. How'd you like to meet the moron who made this thing, huh? I say that every time I work on a Ford Escape. There we go. We slide it ahead. We get our battery cable coming this way. Get our wires coming this way. And what you have to do now is we have to unhook the battery current sensor. You gotta push on the release tab, which is right here on the back. Give that a push with your little finger. Set that to the side. Okay. Then you get back to where you can unhook the, the negative terminal. Easy peasy. This car has the start stop technology so it uses an AGM battery group 48 
not all of these use the same exact battery. This one does, however. And then you unhook your negative. You grab the little handles. Go, oh, motherfucker! Get her up out of here. Redistribute the dirt that was in there to another portion of the engine compartment. Make sure you plug up the hole to the turbo. Let's grab the other battery. Make some noise. In case your wife's looking, that way she knows you're doing something. You must be doing something, you're making noise. Pull that off. We're gonna wanna stick this little fella out there. Mm. Make sure she goes. No, nope. we're gonna have to give her the old spreaderoo. The old spreaderoo. You know what that move is. Okay, that's loosened up. Let me get our cable spreader ruler. Grab your battery terminal speculum. <laughs> I'm just kidding, it's not called a speculum. It could be. They're similar, just different. Give her a spreader roof. Does the same thing, right? In a sense, I suppose. Uh, stick that on there. Oh, now she wiggles down nice. Now we've got protrusion coming through. Tighten up our clamp. Make it straight, make it look nice. She goes to the car show and loses points for that. That would not sit well with you. At least it wouldn't with me. Okay. It's very tight. And then uh, we're gonna start rolling back here. We're gonna plug in. You guys probably can't even see what's happening, but just go with the commentary if you can. Okay, that baby's plugged in, all right? All right, let's do this before people flip out. Sounds like we're just about out. Liberal douching. <laughs> it's a fluid film. It is dielectric. going all the way once it's all the way in now you have to reach back here can you guys see where we're at you probably can't let me try to move you slightly it's likely not any better but we need to first put in the wire loom into the slot that is the wire loom that houses the wires for the battery current sensor and then we stick the battery cable on top of it All right, just like so. And then your clamp, remember, the one that has a little donger sticking off it, went to the right. It may fit both ways, but we're gonna put it, oh no it doesn't, it actually has a slot over there for it. Then grab both of these nuts, and then we're gonna stick them right on there. That's easy. Vance Auto will do this for you for free. In your parking lot. 20 below zero wind whipping. Poor little guys out there. Uh, they might not do these ones. Cause I don't think they can register batteries or anything like that. Torque that one to factory specs. And as well as this one. Do not skip that part. Just go on to plastic, so if you're not using a calibrated tool such as we are, just be careful. Use some common sense. And then we're gonna slip this back in. Get her started in the slot. Give her a click. Okay, torque it. Stick this little guy back on while we're right here. 
course we'll grab our calibrated torque wrench. Different setting on this, we'll have to, we'll have to change it. There we go. Okay, so that one's torqued. Everybody's torqued. Push our little Christmas trees back in. Bada bing, bada boom. They're all in, that guy's in, everybody's in. We're ready for the party. There's that, give it one of them. Okay, everybody's hooked up, no reason we can't hook it up. Ooh, ooh, it's all a big flash. Oh, we need to give this a little special attention also. Just want to be able to get it down. So you've got the full lug coming through. I'm going all the way. Be sure to do this one first and then your negative side last for safety. These videos are for entertainment purposes only, anyway, so I wouldn't do anything. Don't do what I do. That's what I always say. Give that a little spritz of some goo. And then, so this has these little latches here and here, which go over the edge, okay? You can push it down too far and you'll go over it like that, that went over. Bring it up, you'll feel it. You'll feel it guide right in on that slot, okay? They can go too far, both those are too far. Bring her up a little. Right there, Robert, your mother's brother, we're in. Make sure I got the back ones. Yes, sir, okay. That's it, you're done, easy. We gotta put this little guy in. So we need to, we're gonna take it apart because we were kind of being cavemen before. Be a caveman, man. Usually, I don't like touching these because after about the third trip to the express loop, these are all stripped and snapped, and you just don't want to get near this stuff. Nothing against the express loop guys; just they got a bad rep. Okay, uh, the air filter does have a little indicator donger. The faces down now typically on these there is a there is a retainer under here so we've got the ones down here we've I've spritzed this one and I've spritzed that one but typically there is there is one here which goes in this slot below the uh, below this little rubber for the air intake this car didn't have one uh, either it doesn't have one or it did have one and now it no longer has one because of a you know previous repair or something perhaps I'm just speculating. All I know is there's not one on this vehicle. I don't know if this makes it any easier to put in. Unlikely. I guess we could have left the lid on it. I'm just gonna very gently push that past here. Get our little tube down there. Get our rubber flipped up here. I'm gonna get the rubber on the, uh, or the air intake hose up there on. And then it's gonna kind of sit where it needs to. And then we're gonna look to make sure that our little rubber dongers are going in the hole like they should. One back here, you can feel that one and you can see that one. And boy, do they look good. And we've got this rubber over here. Pull it up on there and latch it. Bring it down, latch it on. Take this little fella, click that back in. Put your Christmas tree fastener back in. Get your screwdriver. Now that the positive terminal is under the protection of the shield. Oh, there we go. All right, that's good enough for the girls we run with. 
and then filter donger down that's a little rhyme you got to remember filter donger down get that lined up because the filter here goes into some slots okay because it's the back part of the housing so you got to make sure you line it up and that's usually where these filters get all messed up hey it's that guy is you've got to get that lined up and the problem is some folks will just go bananas on these screws you know get so you just get gentle i mean gentle We won't even finish them off with this, okay? Take them down some of the way. That one we need to get a uh, nut driver for anyway, so let's go get that and we'll finish them off and then we'll register the battery. We'll call it registering, we'll just, we'll let the car know that it has a new battery in it. I don't know what the, the proper name is. All right, that's it, that's all you need to do. That's all you need to do. Put a battery in your Ford Escape. Super easy. All right, step one. We left our windows up, so I, we may get lucky. We may not have to do any window initialization procedure, but let's just find out. Oh, she starts, that's good. Oh, radio's probably gonna blast us. Stand by here. No, I think it blasts by the radio. Let's see if our one touch down works. One touch up. Oh, we got lucky. I find if you leave the windows up during the process, that usually doesn't go away. All right, that's one touch down. Oh, this might not have express up on the passenger side. Yeah, nope, it's got express down in the rears and on the passenger. Yep, so that's express down. It does not have express up, only on the driver's side. So, okay, so we're good there. Uh, let's see, you know what I mean? Where it goes automatically down and then automatically up. Only does that on the driver's side. Okay, here. It might be a hot function here on Altel, I'm not sure. Right offhand, we'll let this get all, not good a pointing device here. Let's do a hot function, see if it has the battery system monitor, whatever they call it. Yeah, battery monitor system reset. Ignition switch on, hit OK. Presets battery monitor system as batteries replaced. BCM replaced battery monitor system. Do you want to continue? Yes, we do. It's doing an operation right now, currently. It's been reset, yeehaw. Now we can give it back to the customer after we turn the key off. That's it, folks. It's happy, I'm happy, you're happy. This lady's gonna be happy. That's it folks, putting a battery in your Ford Escape. Uh, not super convenient, however not impossible, but you know, you do have to reset that battery monitor system. I don't know how critical that is. Um, I, you know, a lot of the European cars and stuff, I say it like I work on a stupid things, but you know, they have battery registration where you, sometimes you have to buy, like I just did a Volkswagen for a guy the other day, I had to buy the OEM battery because there's a 13 digit serial number on it that you have to input into uh, into the computer. So you have to put the battery in, you gotta get this code off the battery, you go into the you know group 61 or whatever, 62 on the Volkswagen, and you have to put in the amp hour rating, you have to put in the battery serial number, and then register that battery to the car. So it forces you to buy an OEM battery, which in Volkswagen's defense was cheaper to buy that battery than it was to buy like a three-year Napa battery or an interstate. It was actually pretty reasonably priced, so there's really no reason not to, except the home gamer, the you know, you and me, the DIYers, you can't you can't do it. You don't have a scan tool unless you do. If you have a scan tool, you register your battery. So in this one, I don't know if it's the same principle or the same theory. I suppose we could go in service data and read it, but uh, what I've been told is, you know, as the battery degrades over time, the charging strategy of the car has some sort of adaptation 
to you know to that battery to that battery that's war you know that's why it's measuring battery current and, uh you know amps consumed and battery temperature you know there's a lot of things that it can take into into account and that it develops a charging strategy you know for that battery with you know smart charging system so long gone are the days of the old regulator on the firewall the good old days the glory days why don't you guys tell me about your glory days in that comment section questions comments concerns find us on insta facebook you guys know what to do and just remember viewers if i can do it you can do it thanks for watching